Every once in a while, a science fiction book emerges that challenges our preconceptions of what is possible within this genre. Standing on the shoulders of giants for sure, but also showing us something new, something unique. Ada Palmer's Terra Ignota is a four book series set in the 25th century on a seemingly utopian earth. It examines the future nuances of our civilization, painted with a rarely seen flair for prose, world building and narration style. I'm very drawn to the phrase deconstructed science fiction. Every element of these books seems to be bypassing the traditional method of storytelling and would rather attempt to subvert the reader. The world is barely recognisable as the future of our own. Geopolitics is completely transformed due to technological advances, making the whole globe a commutable space. As Ada herself put it, you could live in the Bahamas, work in Tokyo and have lunch in Paris. Nations, the rule of law, economics and customs are no longer a geographical thing. People are defined by what they believe and who they are, and not by where they were born or where they live. One of the big revelations for me while reading this book, a real aha moment, involved the structure of the civilization and what humanity had become. I realized that I must always assume that speculative fiction takes what we are now and projects that into the future. Terra Ignota has a classical futurism feel, if that's even a thing, and I thought this was nothing more than an aesthetic choice. We have 25th century technology, flying cars, a base on the moon, but the look and the feel of the place was a return to the classical, maybe a doffin of the cap to the dawn of civilization. But that's not entirely what's happening here. Being a Harvard graduate and now a professor at Chicago University, as a historian, Ada Palmer understands the ever-shifting sands of political and philosophical structure more than most, certainly more than me. The year 2454 does not need to be binded to the same methods and institutions as the present day. It can be, and probably will be, an extrapolation of the past. Take a slice of the Renaissance, a pinch of ancient Greece, a dollop of the Imperial House of Japan, and apply that to the future. Most of what I just talked about are the grand ligaments of this universe, of this series of books. A lot of the time while I was reading it, it felt like an ancillary didactic experience. I felt like I was learning about real world history, but to be considered the new gold standard, we're gonna need a plot. The actual story is the memoir of a character called Mycroft Canner, a paroled criminal who serves some of the world's most powerful leaders. He is commissioned to document this apparent future history for the consumption of who? It's not always entirely clear. There's a certain air of history is written by the victors, a filter of politics, agenda, truth and interpretation between the book and the reader. In this regard, I found Terra Ignota similar to the Book of the New Sun. Just like Jean Wolfe, Ada Palmer could have chosen a far simpler way to tell us her story, leaving little room for interpretation. But it's that puzzle box, somewhat of a gambled approach that elevates these books. That extra level of submersion can be so rewarding. Anyway, that plot. No spoilers beyond the setup, I promise. Essentially, the first two books are set over seven days, describing the complicated political wranglings between the non-geographical hives. That's the handful of party nations that collectively rule the world and the moon. Centuries of peace and prosperity are threatened by a planted leaked document in one of the family houses. Fingers are pointed, alliances forged and broken, secrets uncovered and lines drawn in the sand. We witness this fascinatingly complex diplomatic conflict that eventually spills out into a very real war, hoovering up all the quirks and textures of this world along the way. Usually I would be saying that that is plenty enough for me, 
an army of beautifully drawn characters, a plethora of weird technology that isn't fully explained, nothing is fully explained in this book in my opinion, a totally fleshed out but somehow still dreamlike world to play out this Machiavellian plot. But there's more. A 13 year old boy called Bridger who can inexplicably turn inanimate objects into real living things like toy soldiers into people who then become characters in the story and affect events. It's this dark fantasy power in the middle of a hard science fiction political drama and yes apparently he could create weapons and disease and even a black hole if he wanted to. The future of humanity may not be in the hands of the hives after all but those of an innocent child. The cherry on top for me is the style in which all of this is presented. The lovely prose, the slightly obscure but valid language, the layered narration of Mycroft is extraordinary. He's breaking the fourth wall but surely he has us confused with somebody else. It's a dense, rich, intelligent bundle of intriguing joy. But is this the new gold standard in science fiction? For many people it certainly can be. Those that like to work hard for their literary kicks will look forward to reading the whole saga again to catch more references, iron out that plot and really live in the skin of this future history. Not so fast. I do understand that the very idea of saying one book is better than another book is bordering on the ludicrous, the new gold standard in science fiction. You may think it was absolute shit. Ada Palmer is flexing her historian muscles and I think it's fair to say that if you don't get certain references, the allegory, the homage to certain classical and contemporary works, then you will only experience Terra Ignota to a certain depth. To illustrate that point and to defend it, all of these will illuminate the series somewhat. Malka Alder's Infomacracy, David Bodanis' Passionate Minds, William Manchester's A World Lit Only by Fire, Adam Smith, The Making of the Modern World, Sir Thomas More's Utopia, <laughs> I mean obviously, The Book of the New Sun, Alexander the Great by John Maxwell O'Brien, Locke's An Essay Concerning Human Understanding, Arthur Herman, The Scottish Enlightenment, The Hero as a Man of letters, Thomas Carlyle, Voltaire, Paradise Lost, John Payne's Common Sense, Rousseau's The Social Contract, Homer, The Iliad and The Odyssey, Hobbes' Leviathan, Machiavelli's The Prince, well duh, and a healthy dose of Shakespeare. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning which doth cease to be. Romeo and Juliet. Read all of these and I'm sure this will make complete and utter sense. I haven't read them all. Of course not. These aren't even the real books. This Jurassic Park. My point is Terra Ignota can absolutely be appreciated if you do no homework at all and just read it and not know what the hell you're actually reading most of the time. It can be great. You may love it. But the more expanded mind may pull out some of those fruitier flavours. And if you're just looking for a simple adventure in space when you read science fiction, this may be a little bit too much for you as well. Too much people talking in rooms. Beautiful people talking in beautiful rooms, but maybe not to your taste. My pitch is to the Gene Wolfe crowd and maybe even the Frank Herbert fans who like a bit of philosophy and religion and politics in their space opera or to the people that just appreciate the good shit.